I'm scientific illustrator Stephanie Razzo. Welcome to Nature Sketch Creates step-by-step -step cedar waxwing instructional video. In this video I'll be showing you how to paint the cedar waxwing by using Nature Sketch Creates step-by-step -step painting instructions. You can help this tiny business by shopping for future crates at naturesketchcreate.com, clicking that like button, and subscribing to this YouTube channel. First, collect all the materials and make sure they're ready to go. Remember, this is just a sketch. Take your time, relax, and don't worry too much if you think you might have made a mistake. Let's get started. Step one, transfer the image to the watercolor paper. So you want to tape the image to the back of the watercolor paper, and it doesn't have to be perfectly straight or um, even exactly lined up with the paper. You just want to make sure your image is over the paper itself. So an easy way to do that is just line up the top and it should work pretty well. Take your graphite transfer paper, dark side down, the light side up, place it on top of your watercolor paper. This side has some graphite on it, which when you put pressure on this side, it will transfer that graphite to the watercolor paper. Now I'll show you how that works. So just draw a line anywhere using kind of a medium pressure and check it to make sure you have your transfer paper on there right and that you're using enough pressure and or not too much pressure either. So you'll want it to be here and be able to see it after you add your watercolor to it. So just go throughout and draw over those lines, trace over them to transfer them. It doesn't have to be exact. This is just a sketch. And it might be easier for you to keep track of which lines you have already traced over. If you use a fine tipped colored pencil or a fine tipped colored pen, and this is meant to be a meditative, relaxing exercise. So put on a podcast, some music, an audio book, or sit outside and listen to nature. And just relax and trace over all the lines to transfer them. When you think you have all the lines transferred, hold the paper down gently on one side just to make sure it stays in the right position and flip the transfer paper and the graphite paper up and down to see if you missed any lines. And I start with my eyes on the top and kind of move my eyes down and inspect the image for missed lines. And I always end up missing something And if you don't add the lines in this stage, you can always add them in later as well. Or leave them out altogether. This is your sketch. It is helpful to have those lines as guidelines at least. Once you have all the lines transferred, you can move on to adding the common name and scientific name if you want. It is, of course, optional. Go ahead and trace the inside of the letters of the common name, kind of outlining the inside black area. Since my pencil tip is just a little bit smaller than the text itself. And then I'll trace right over the scientific name to transfer it. When you're done, remove the graphite transfer paper. You can use it over and over. Obviously, I've used this a few times already. You can use it many, many, many times. So save that for future use. 
remove the transfer image and tape from the back of the watercolor paper and remove the tape from the transfer image as well. Save the transfer image to protect your painting from your hand while you're creating the painting. If there isn't a lot of paper on the back of the tape, you can reuse it. So I'll save this for later. Other things you can do with it are compost it or throw it in the trash. Next, take your kneaded eraser. Make sure you knead it to a nice light gray spot. And you can use this to lighten marks by just dabbing right over them. And make sure you re-knead it to a light gray spot after you do that. Or you can use it to remove any unwanted graphite that was left behind on your paper. And I really don't have a lot this time. I might remove a little bit and you can just wipe right over those spots to pick it up. And I recommend using this over your regular eraser because it's much gentler on the watercolor paper. Um, the watercolor paper, if it gets really roughed up, won't take the watercolor the right way. So in order to preserve the quality of the watercolor paper, use a kneaded eraser. Now we're ready to move on to step two. Step two, paint in the waxwing gray black. So first, go ahead and take two drops of the 11H carbon black, shake it up to make sure the paint pigment is well mixed. Sometimes it settles on the sides. You want the full vibrancy of that color. So go ahead and dip your brush in that a little bit and then add some water to the side. I'm going to dab it off onto my towel and add a little bit more water. We're going to use a wet light color. So if this is a color mixed in your palette to appear light by using a lot of water. And it'll appear light on your page when you use it to paint. So dab it off onto your towel and then test it out on your test paper. That looks like about the right color to me. Dab it on my towel after picking up some more. And then I'm going to start here on the tail down here. And then I'm going to move the paint all the way up. To the nape and I'll avoid the little red areas here they're gonna be red later if you accidentally paint in them that's okay and this will create a little bit of a natural gradient as the paint runs out in my brush And you don't have to be exact. You can see this is just a sketch. I got a lot of paint out of the lines here and here. This is just a quick representation of this bird. It's not meant to be a perfect painting. It's going to be perfectly imperfect. You need a little bit more. I left a little bit out of the tail here just to add it in. On the, a little bit on the wing here. feathers like you see in step two's image. Pick up some more and then I'm going to add it to the mask and the bill and the eye. I'm going to avoid the little reflection in the center. If you need a finer tip on your brush just roll it on your towel after picking up the paint. And if it's too light you can always pick up more. I think this will work fine. pick up a little bit more, dab it off on my towel, and then I'm going to add it to the feet, legs, nails, and branch and legs. And when you're applying this painting, you can just apply it in one single layer 
and a lot like you would use a marker, filling in the spaces, except if the paint runs out, we'll need to pick up some more. I like a marker, it just stays the same. Go ahead and clean off your brush after you added all the color. Let this dry and move on to step three. Step three, paint in wax being yellow and rust. So first, you want to take your Hansa Yellow Light, shake it up. We'll use two drops just so we have enough to work with. One, two. Take your clean brush, add a tiny bit of water, not much, just not putting any um, pressure on my barrel of my water brush or adding any paint from your vessel, just taking your damp brush and mixing up that paint a little bit with what was on the brush from being cleaned. And then pick up a little bit of that paint, dab it off on your towel and check it out. Make sure it's vibrant enough, you didn't add too much water, dab it off onto your towel, and then add it to the tail tip. Pick up a little bit more, dab it off onto your towel, and then I'm going to add it to the bottom here of the abdomen that borders with the wing feathers, all the way down over here to the branch. And then I'm gonna clean off my brush I'm going to clean, take a clean, damp brush and just pull that paint, the paint right over it, pulling it up to the abdomen and all the way through here. Through the chest and the throat. So you can see how that creates a little bit of a gradient. And if for some reason you want it to be a little bit darker, you can always pick up a little bit more, dab it off on your towel, and start in the same place. You won't still wet, pull it through. You can see that makes a little bit of a darker gradient. I like the light color, but I did want to demonstrate that darker gradient, just in case you want to make it a little bit brighter. And clean off your brush and mix the wax wing rust. So mix the wax wing rust using two drops of the 32H raw sienna, shaking that up before putting it in our palette. One, two. Adding a tiny bit of water just so it moves nicely. It's a little thick from our water vessel or our water brush by pressing just real gently. I don't want a lot of water. If you end up adding too much water, you can always add more paint pigment. Dab off on your towel and test it out. We're gonna use this full dry color. It doesn't, if it's still moving kind of stiff on your paper, add just a tiny bit more water. It should still be just as dark, just will be moving a little easier. It doesn't feel like it gets stuck on the paper. And then add it in, and I'm gonna add it to the crest. And I'm just gonna add it to the full space like you did before. If it's easier for you, you can outline the area first and then fill it in. And then we're gonna add it to the head here and then we're going to continue painting down into the nape and back after we do that. So I'm going to avoid this little white ring under the eye. Just filling it in so I outlined most of the area and then filled it in. And then I'm not gonna get any extra paint, I'm just gonna go ahead and paint right into the nape and back, letting the paint kind of gradually run out as I paint. So the paint pigment is running out from my brush, so it's appearing lighter. 
on my page. So it's going to be a little darker on the head and lighter on the bottom. And then I'm going to clean my brush. And while this is still wet, I'm going to pull some paint down into the chest. Clean off my brush. I'm going to add a little bit to the branch. So like you see in step three's image, I'm just going to go to the top of the branch here. And then clean off my brush, let this dry, and move on to step four. Step four, paint in wax wing gray black. So we we'll want to use kind of the dry dark, so not the driest darkest, not the wettest lightest in our palette. Something in between, so it has a medium pigmentation to it. Dab it off onto your towel and check it out, see if it matches that color. I just need a little bit more water. So I'm going to release a little bit of water from my brush, add it in, check it out. That looks better. So I'm going to pick up some of that paint, dab it off onto my towel, and I'm going to add it to the mask, eye, bill, and chin. If you have too much water in your brush, just dab it off onto your towel. And if your paint runs out, just pick up a little bit more and continue on. And fix the edges while the paint's still wet. You can move it around a little bit. And while this is still wet, clean off your brush and then take it to create a gradient from the paint on the chin down through the throat. And if it's a little too light, you can always pick up just a little bit more paint and add that in while well, it's still wet. I might just take a little bit of that full black color because I got a little too light. Dab it in there. My color was a bit light and then just kind of pull that down into the throat there. I should have stuck with this a little darker color, but I used this lighter one so it wasn't really showing up against my really dark raw sienna here. Every time I paint, everything turns out just a little bit different. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more of that color here. I add a lot more. I'm gonna test it out again. Maybe I'll pull it to the side here. It looks really dark now. So I want it back to be this color again actually looks right now and I'm going to add it to the tail and the rump and work up through to the nape letting the paint gradually run out from my brush to create a gradient I actually ran out of so I'm going to go one more time and start it in the tail and move on up. Through the nape to create a real light gradient. And if it's not dark enough, just do it again. 
bringing that paint up, paint pigment up through the nape. Looks good. I'm going to pick it up again and add it to the wings. Just a sketch. I'm not taking too much time to be super exact. Just relaxing and painting this in. And lastly, I'm going to use it in a line motion to add some lines like you see in step four's image and your final reference image on the branch. And you can be really creative with this and just add them in. It doesn't need to be the same, of course. None of this really has to be the same. Just a representation of this animal, not an exact copy. I'm gonna take a little bit more of that paint and I'm just going to add it to this lower part of the abdomen. And then clean my brush, take that clean damp brush, move that paint up through the chest, creating a little bit of a gradient there. And lastly, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit to the eye, right here in the center. And clean off my brush, let this dry, and move on to step five. Step five, paint and waxwing rust. So pick up a little bit of this waxwing rust, dab it off onto my towel, and add it sparingly to the bottom of the crest. Just a little bit, like you see in step five's image. Pick up a little bit more, and I'm going to add it starting from the left around the cheek. And through here to the throat. And then I'm going to use a clean wet brush to move some of that into the cheek so it's not too dark in that area. And I might let that gradient a little bit more into the chest here again. And then pick some more up. I'm going to add it here to the nape and just kind of let it gradually run out here in the middle back. Clean off my brush and pick up a little bit more and I'm just going to add it to the very top of this branch here to darken it up a little bit more. Clean off my brush, let this dry and move on to step six. Step six, paint and wax being red and gray black. So I'll start with the waxing red. We'll take a little bit of the Carmine 28H. One, two. I don't want it to be super wet, but it's still on the lighter side. It looks pretty good. Dab it off onto my towel. Pick up a little more, dab it on my towel, and test it out one more time. It's about right. And then I'm just going to apply it. I need a lot of paint so I didn't pick up more. I just added it to the little wing tips here. Clean off my brush. And that red is kind of vibrant, so it might take a little bit longer to get that out of the brush. And then I'm going to pick up that driest, darkest black. I'm going to need to add a little bit more water to it because it's not moving very well. It's going to get kind of stuck on my paper. Dab it off my towel and check it out. Looks pretty good. And when it's really 
concentrated like this, you want it to stay dark, but you also want to be able to move it on your page and see how that kind of glides over the page rather than the pigment kind of getting stuck and clumping up. So pick that up and I'm going to add it to the mask, the bottom of the bill and the chin, and then create a gradient with a wet, clean brush that goes into the throat. I'm going to add it to the tail and the wings, and I'm going to use it to line the legs and the feet and the nails. So I'll pick up a little bit more of that, dab it off on my towel, and go ahead and add it in. Use a clean wet brush here to soften this edge a little bit, kind of a little harder than I would have liked. Kind of move that paint from that softened edge up into the rump. Like I said before, whenever I paint, it can turn out just a little bit different. And then lastly, I'm going to line those feet and legs and nails like you see in Find a Reference Image and Step 6's image. So I just want to make sure that you can see some of the lighter gray underneath. Again, it's just a sketch. Relax and add it in. Don't worry too much about being exact. I want this to be a little bit more curved in the black part, so I'm going to add a little bit more in. I'm going to go ahead and let this dry and move on to step seven. Step seven, add ink lines. So start with the smallest tipped micron, the 005 or the 005 micron. The smallest tip there you can see. And use it to redraw all of the lines and redefine the lines you transferred in step one, except for these feather lines on the back and nape rump along here and the bottom half of the head. And you can use this also to redefine the lines depending on where the paint ended up. Uh, if you'd like to. So here on the beak, you can kind of draw on the outside a little bit to redefine and smooth out the shape of that beak a little bit. Again, this should be a meditative exercise, just relaxing. So put on a podcast, an audio book, or just sit outside and listen to nature. Maybe listen to your favorite music and redraw those lines. I'm also going to re outline the common name and rewrite the scientific name as well. And I want to demonstrate that you can add more paint once this is dry or more ink because the pens are waterproof and so I missed the last part of step six adding in a little bit of the dry dark waxwing gray black to the branch. So I'm going to demonstrate how you can add it right over that. Sometimes you might forget some things on a step or decide you want to change it a little bit and that's totally fine. You can do that at any point and I just want to show you how that can be done. So I 
picked up a little bit more of that color, dabbed it off on my towel, checked it out. It looks about right. So I'm gonna pick up that color again, dab it off onto my towel and just apply it right over that ink. And pick up a little bit more, add it in after dabbing it on my towel. And of course I want to let this dry before adding more ink lines. But now you can see that you can just add more paint at any point. So don't worry too much if you miss something in one step. Next I'm going to use the O1 Black Micron to write in the scientific name. And it seems like it's a little bit clogged, maybe had a little bit of paint in it or a little bit of the um, graphite in it. So you can see it's clogged on one part. So I just kind of turn it and write some marks on a piece of paper until it starts to work better. And that'll unclog it most of the time. Just want to try to turn it while you're using it to make sure all sides are unclogged. So I just kind of rotate it. Looks like we got it. So next I'm going to thicken the lines on the right side of the bird from the bottom of the bill all the way down to the wing. I'm going to use it to add lines to the eye ring. So just kind of squiggle up and down in a circle using up and down motion going around in a circle. Create those. I'm going to use it to thicken the lines on the right side of the wing feathers. So not going all the way over, just on the right side. And then I'm going to move on to using the 08 Micron. I'm going to use the 08 Micron to fill in the common name. And you do want to be careful because this ink does tend to smudge before it dries. I'm putting a lot onto the paper here with this thicker tipped Micron. So don't run your hand over it till it's dry. I'm going to use it to darken the area on the mask a little bit. It's going to use some lines kind of starting on one end and going to the other in the direction of the feathers on the here. Use it to fill in and outline the eye. I use it to outline and reline the legs, feet, and nails. You can use your final reference image or your transfer image for reference. use it to outline the branch use it to outline the tail feathers to reline the outline of these wings some of the wing tips since I didn't write draw those in with the other micron. I just use the light marks to draw around those so I didn't press very hard with my 08 micron. Alternatively you could have drawn it in with the 05. And then I'm just going to add it to this bottom abdomen line here. Just going just a little bit above the branch. 
and you can add it anywhere else you might feel like you need. And I think my image needs a little bit there and maybe a little bit on the crest. I'm going to line these toes a little bit more, the nail. Kind of smooth it out and sharpen the tip of those nails a little bit. And I like the way this looks, so we're done. Great job and keep practicing. You have just created a unique painting that only you could do. Thank you for joining me. I hope you had fun and had a chance to relax a little. Next, you have some options what to do with this painting. You can punch holes in it and add it to your sketchbook. Send it in the mail as a gift, frame it, display it around your house. Also make sure to share it on our Facebook banner page. Use the hashtag NatureCreateArt to have it featured on our social media. Check out the Nature Sketch Create website to shop for future crates and sign up for our newsletter for regular updates. If you have any questions or like to see a certain animal or plant featured in a future lesson, please leave it in the comments below. Thanks again for joining me. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and shop for future crates at naturesketchcrate.com.